Hey guys, Chavi here. So I just read the book titled I Am Numero Quattro and let me tell you, woo boy, it was a doozy. This book was a roller coaster of emotions and it was also really well written. Now this should go without being said, but this is a book review, so there will be spoilers. You have been warned. So it starts off with an epilogue that no one really cares about and that talks about their aliens and super kids. Then we get to four, a very handsome teenage boy that is not 15 years old. Anyway, they basically explain that there are nine kids that got sent to Earth from the planet Lorian. The reason they were sent there is because these guys called Mogadorians. I don't know, people call them Mogs, so let's go with that. These Mogs were designed to be total jerks and wiped out the entire planet. So these kids that were sent to Earth are by default much better than us. They are stronger, faster, can hold their breaths for much longer, jump higher, and are 110% more attractive. Mm-hmm. Anyway, when one of them dies, a ring burrs around their ankle. Number four, known as Daniel Jones, as of now, was talking to a girl, you know, getting to know her. When all of a sudden his ankle starts burning. Then he swims off never to be seen in Florida again. He and his chapon. Wait, what? <laughs> Sepon? Oh. <clears throat> He and his sapon, or guardian, Henry, have to leave Florida and go to a different state and change their names to keep away from the Mogs, for they are probably tracking their every move. So they end up moving to Ohio and Ford changes his name to John Smith. I know, boring. When they end up getting a house in Paradise, Ohio, they meet the real estate agent, Annie Hart, and she's like, yo, you are one attractive young man. You should meet my daughter. She goes to the same school as you. Okay. On the next day he goes to school and meets all the important side characters in one day. And can I please point out that these are unrealistic expectations for teenagers in movies? I mean, even the nerd looks good! Look at him. Anyway, he ends up meeting the stereotypical high school set list of main characters. The love interest, Sarah Hart, the nerd best friend that is very superstitious about aliens or something, Sam Good. Then he meets a stereotypical bully that for some reason hates a new kid because he fell in love with his ex-girlfriend, Mark James. Also, for some reason, a dog starts following him around, so they eventually keep him and call him Bernie Coser. So, Halloween comes around and then Mark kind of gets the main character, his best friend, love interest and best friends love interest into the forest and kind of separates them from the rest of the group. So they try to beat up four and they end up regretting the mistake and get their goggles thrown out of town. So basically Mark's plan to beat up the new kid fails and stuff and then Sarah and four kiss and basically the entire relationship is basically they're just them kissing like every three pages. So we're not gonna let that lead the story, right? Wrong. Anyway, Henry buddy gets a little suspicious about some newspaper article called They Walk Among Us and goes to investigate Four ends up going to Sarah's Thanksgiving party. See, it leads the whole story. Four ends up going to Sarah's Thanksgiving party and notices Henry's taking a little longer than expected. Then he gets nervous and blows up Sarah's camera with his brain. Yeah, uh, he has telekinesis and can glow like a flashlight. More on that later. So he goes to Sam and he's all like, yo, we need to drive to Athens, Ohio. Okay, so they end up driving to Athens and saving Henry. Meanwhile, Sam figures out about Four's powers by saving him by lifting him off the ground with telekinesis and flashing lights in the bad guy's eyes with his hands. Then they jump out of a window and commence training. They basically tell Four to throw things around while he's on fire. So the next big plot point is when Mark invites them to a party and ends up setting his house on fire. Sarah gets stuck in the burning house with two doggos and John's all like, I need to save her! And runs into the building with everyone watching and thinks nobody will see him. Sarah ends up finding out about his powers and gets exposed and the mocks find them and trap them inside of school the very next day. They end up finding Six who can turn invisible and control the elements and Bernie Coaster runs into the woods after the mocks even though he is a pupper and people think he dies but you'll see what happens later. Anyway, Four gets into a fight with a mog and somehow survives and kills it. Then he gets hit with a knife and gets all like, ow, knives hurt! and it drains all his powers and he can hardly do anything anymore and then a giant monster comes out of nowhere and it turns out this is Bernie Coaster. Basically, Bernie gets in a big fight with another big pupper and Bernie almost dies. This is when Four realizes he can talk to animals now, by the way. So Four carries Bernie, then him and Henry walk through a field full of enemies and... Oh, looks like we're almost through this enemy infested field without being hurt. Ow! You're right! Knives do hurt! I'm not crying. They're crying. Anyway, Henry dies and Four has to leave Ohio with Six, also leaving his friends and girlfriend. Boo-hoo the end. Anyway, I hope you like this very fast and very bad book reveal. See you later. Bye.